we go ahead and get started. Uh, we're waiting on a couple more people, so they'll be coming in uh, as we start. But welcome to the 2013 Career Development Workshop. We're very excited that you chose to be here on this beautiful Saturday afternoon. Uh, the Career Development Workshop is a very important uh, event for us, for JET AA Chicago. Um, we make this annual effort to provide for the community and for JET alumni to grow and connect uh, professionally. So one of our missions as JET AA Chicago is to support a social and professional network for our JET alumni, so we hope that that will be achieved today with this. Uh, we have three excellent speakers. We have Charlotte Weeks, who's right here. We have Larry New and David Ron, who will be coming a bit later. Um, and they'll be sharing their expertise and knowledge with us. Uh, I'd like to thank them for coming and also thank the Consulate General of Japan at Chicago for providing today's venue, the Japan Information Center. Um, we have Brian Castor, our networking coordinator here, who will introduce Charlotte. Um, after Charlotte, Larry and David will present. And following that, we will have a wine and cheese networking reception at the end. So, Brian. Thanks. Thank you for coming out, and uh, thanks to our speaker for coming as well. Uh, so as a quick introduction, our uh, first speaker is going to be Charlotte Weeks. She is a certified career management coach, a nationally certified resume writer, and a certified professional resume writer, and I've confirmed, does not write her own resume, which is very good to know. Um, Charlotte owns Weeks Career Services Incorporated, and she's a co-founder of MarketMyCareer.com, both located in Chicago. She has clients across the globe which she assists with career marketing documents, uh, helping them decide what type of work they might want to pursue, as well as interview preparation. Charlotte's a featured expert, has been a featured expert for various media outlets, including NBC Chicago, WGN-TV, Fox TV, Time Magazine, and The Wall Street Journal. She's the author of I Want to Work in an Association, Now What? Uh, that is an answer to it. Um, a Guide to Getting a Job in a Professional Association, Membership, Organization, or Society. Uh, she's going to be speaking today on job search strategies. So we give her a round of applause for Charlotte. Thank you. Well, I want to first thank everybody for having me. Um, I was telling a couple people, I've traveled quite a bit, and Japan is one of the few places I've never been. And I feel a little bit left out, <laughs> but now it is high on my list. Um, I've been learning a lot about talking about it through talking to all of you guys today. And I regret that I'm not able to stick around for the wine and cheese reception today, um, which is why I'm going to begin with an apology. I've been sick the last few days, and my voice is just coming back, as you guys might be able to tell. So if you can hear me at any point, please let me know. I'm going to try and stay close to the microphone. Um, but after the session, Robert is going to be emailing everyone a copy of the presentation that I have here today. So I'm going to talk for about 45, 50 minutes, and then allow some time at the end for questions. So if you guys don't mind just holding your questions till then, we may end up addressing some of them as we go on. And if experience um, is any indication, a lot of people tend to have the same questions, too. So we'll just hang on and um, get those all at the end. So before I go into how to search for a job, I wanted to tell everybody something else that's really important. It has to be done before you actually look, or odds are you won't have a successful job search. And that's knowing what it is that you want to go for. A lot of people want to stay open and consider multiple opportunities, and that is fine. You can certainly look for different things. You can kind of be in a family of jobs, you know, let's say marketing, and that might be a few things. But if you don't really have any idea, or it appears that you don't, it's going to be less effective. And using that marketing example again, it's the same way as if you were advertising a product. If you act like you don't really know who would use it, nobody's really going to buy it. So the same ends up applying when you're actually looking for a job. You have to know what it is you're looking for. So I would just urge all of you to take some, of, some time and figure out what it is you want to do next, why you're qualified to do it, get a sense of how the market is for it, see that it is a industry or sector that people are actually hiring for in Chicago or wherever it is you're planning to live. And then the rest of the job search will be much, 
much, much easier. So I understand it's kind of counterintuitive. You want to stay open to everything out there. But the reality is you're going to have better success, get more interviews, get more offers, get more leads, if you do narrow your focus to something that you can easily explain to people. So there are four main job search strategies. And there are a few that kind of fall under each of these buckets. But I wanted to just start by seeing if anyone could kind of guess what some of these might be. Anyone want to throw out an answer? Online. Yes, applying to open jobs is one of them. Networking. Networking is another one. Looking at the company's websites to see if there's openings available. Yes, but that kind of falls under online and another one. Referrals? Referrals kind of falls under networking. Okay. Just like cold calling? Yeah, and that's kind of what I was talking about with what Robert said, direct outreach. And I will be talking about all of these methods in more in depth, but that is one. The fourth one, I think when I say it, you guys are going to be like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> Anything else come to mind? It doesn't work for all industries, so you guys might never have had to take advantage of it. I'll give you a hint. A lot of times it's used for really senior positions. Yes, recruiters. And that's why you'll see this slide here has those strategies, but in the order of most effective to least effective. Does this surprise anybody? Any of this? Really, what, what surprises you? I'm surprised recruiters is down further than recruiters get a percentage of what they use to offer their content directly by companies. Mm -hmm. Anybody else surprised too? Yeah. yeah. Well, by what? That same thing by us. The recruiters? Yeah. I'll give you some stats, and I realize these don't come up to 100 because these are kind of broad and I've heard them all from various studies. But networking, 70 to 90% of jobs are found that way. That is by far the highest success rate for people getting jobs. Direct outreach, about 25 to 30%. Recruiters, about 15%. And the reason that's kind of low is because it's really high in certain industries, but overall, it kind of brings the average down because some don't need it at all. There was a movie, I didn't see it, and I keep forgetting the name of it too. It was with Mila Kunis and Justin Timberlake. Yeah, and I heard that she was a, a journalism recruiter. And it's funny because I read an article about it, and it was one of those articles about like jobs that are in movies that don't really exist or that pay a ton, but they don't really don't or they don't really pay much. And that's a, a job that I am not convinced exists at all because you don't really need recruiters to find journalists because there's usually way more journalists than that need to be filled. And it's not usually a really high paying position either, at least entry level, which means that there's gonna be more people going for those jobs. So that kind of um, is a little Hollywood story that again reminds us that what we see on TV is definitely not translating into reality, especially with the job search. Um, applying to postings, this is a really interesting one because at the highest rate, only 10% of people get their offers this way, but something like 95% of people only use this method to apply for jobs, which is what the discrepancy is. When you have all these people going for this one job, obviously the success rate of getting that job is going to be pretty low. So what this is telling me and what I want to impart to all of you is spend the bulk of your time networking. 
keep applying online by all means if you find something that interests you. And I'm also going to give you some suggestions for how to boost those odds. But definitely don't rely on any one method, especially if that method is just applying online. Again, please bear with me. I'm going to have my water every few slides so I can keep my voice up. I guess it gives you guys a second to read through these slides, too. So it's kind of interesting that I talk so much about why networking works, because I used to hate the idea. Even though I kind of did it naturally, I guess I didn't really understand why it was important or the benefit behind it. But I think I hated it because my grandma used to always say, it's not what you know, it's who you know. And it just sounded so um, cynical. And it just made it sound like it didn't matter how good a job you did, that you were just not going to get a job unless you knew the right people. I now understand the reasoning behind this. For one thing, that is only part of it, knowing the right people. You still have to know how to do the job and be a good candidate. You can't have one without the other. And, and that's not even true. You know, there, we all have stories of somebody who did just apply online and got called and they didn't know anyone. That does happen, of course. But one of the reasons why HR uses networking as a number one way to source people is because it lowers their rate of turnover. Companies have to pay a lot of money every time they bring on a new employee. Just going through the interview process, training a new person. So if they keep doing that and each person leaves after a couple months, it's really not cost efficient for the company. And in the end, it's not good for the employee either. Nobody wants to get a job for just a few months and then have to look for another one, even if it's their decision and they're not happy. There are a lot of companies that actually will come up with goals at the beginning of the year for how many of their employees they want to be brought in by referrals. I've heard as much as 50% at some places. So they're actively trying to get people who were referred by someone else. And the reason is it just increases the rate of success. If somebody's referred by somebody who already works there and is a good employee, odds are that person is going to stay a lot longer, cutting down risk for the company and the candidate. And it does work. And the one thing that everybody forgets about it, I do myself, is people want to help, and they also can get referral bonuses. So you may be helping them by asking them to help you get a job or get in front of the decision maker. Um, my first job out of college, I was referred by my now sister-in-law, and you know I still tease her about it because it was like months after I started that I found out she got a bonus for referring me. And I was like, oh, I thought you just did that out of the goodness of your heart. <laughs> and she's like, of course I did, but you know, the money helped too. <laughs> so remember that this is something that a lot of people do understand. It's just kind of part of the job search now. So you're really not offending people or appearing pushy or desperate if you ask for help. The key is to really also give in return, to make it clear that you are available to help in any way you can, if you can, and to stand by that if you have the opportunity. You might not, but people do appreciate that you're at least putting yourself out there if there is that opportunity to help them out. So a couple tips on how to make networking work for you. One is, what should you say? Everyone's probably heard about the elevator pitch. Does anyone have one? No one? Or no one wants to share? <laughs> I will tell you this. Um, elevator pitches, I think, have gotten a little bit convoluted. There's books written about them. There's teleseminars teaching you how to come up with one. You really just need to remember it's telling people what it is that you do. It's the response to the question, what is it you do? And if you're working now, you could say that. If you're looking for a new opportunity, you can say, well, I'm currently looking to do XYZ and um, I'd ideally want to work with a company like ABC. 
you're just letting the person know that you're talking to in a really short, concise way what it is you're looking for. You're kind of planting the seeds so they know how they can help you if they, if they do have the means to do so. Um, it's really about kind of coming up with your ask. I don't know if anyone's heard of that, but in a way it's saying, it's asking for what it is you want without being really direct. You're just saying, you know, well, this is what I'm doing. This is what I'm looking for right now. Read this, another good acronym. If you're just meeting someone for the first time, you know, like there's going to be this networking event um, today after the speeches, and you just want to kind of get to know them a little bit better, or you want to learn a little bit more about the kind of work they do, following this acronym will help you come up with some questions. You may ask, so what do people in your industry read? What are some of the big journals or um, sites that people go to? What are some events that people regularly go to? I'm drawing a blank on A. Oh, activities. What activities do people um, attend to stay sharp? What educational activities do people in your industry regularly attend? And then P, who do you know? Who else do you recommend I talk to that may work for this company? What's nice is this also works in reverse. So when I was talking about kind of the give, these are things you can share with people, whether it's in a meeting face-to-face -face, or afterwards if you've connected later on. You might share an article. It's kind of your read. You might tell them that there's one of these JET events that they might want to attend because there's going to be a speaker they want to hear or there's going to be people there that they might want to meet. Activity. You may hear about an educational activity or event that somebody would be interested in. You can let them know about it. And then this is the really powerful one, connecting other people who may be mutually beneficial to each other. That's still a form of networking. One easy way to just start networking every day is asking people you come across, who do you know? Who do you know that I should talk to that works for this company that's looking for, to hire people in these industries? These are just some conversation starters that'll help you kind of broach that subject. Because I know it can be a little scary to feel like you're coming out, out of the blue and start feeling like you're asking for a job. But these are some softer ways to kind of um, broach the subject and not appear too forward. And they are much more effective. Is everyone here on LinkedIn? Yes. OK. Is anyone not? OK. I would strongly recommend you go on LinkedIn. Um, it's a good way to keep in touch, for one thing, with all the people you've met while you were abroad. It's a good way to keep in touch with the people you meet regularly. If you've lost the business card or you don't remember what it was they did, it's just a really great tool for not only staying in touch with people you've met, but also meeting new people. So for those of you that are back in the city, um, may have been away for several years, it's a good way to start building up a network when you're kind of new to the area in some ways. I don't know if all of you used to live here or not, but either way, it's a good way to kind of build your network from scratch without even leaving your house. So I would just challenge all of you who don't have it to today, at least go and set up an account. Joining industry associations or organizations is another big way to network with people, just like we're doing here today. This is a great one. You're meeting with other people with a common interest. And you know, as great as I think LinkedIn is, um, there's a lot you can do with Twitter and Facebook too. There's never any substitute for those face-to-face -face interactions. So I urge you to attend as many of those whenever you can, especially when you are actively looking for a job. And then volunteering. Not only just with things that you want to do, causes you're passionate about, but also some of these organizations we've talked about. People who are in um, senior level positions in volunteer organizations, they kind of gain a reputation. They're known, and a lot of times opportunities come to them. So I'm going to put Robert on the spot for a second. With you being past president, you probably got to know more people than you would have if you were just a member of an organization. Is that correct? Yeah, I mean, that's reasonable. Yeah, and I can tell you guys, you know, a lot of those, um, those media outlets that I've been quoted in, a lot of those came because I was president of the National Resume Writers Association. 
and that was an all-volunteer organization and just by being visible at a senior level it really helped a lot and I know it's slightly different because that's you know I'm a business owner but that is the same regardless of if you own your own business or you're looking for a job it's just that your business is going to be whatever it is you do whether it's finance or IT so it really really pays to get involved and active and volunteer in some of these organizations plus it's a lot easier to start meeting people that way um, especially if any of you are shy or new to networking it feels a lot less forced